said that Marchan are green? Well, to know that, you have to go back to 1912, when Edgar Burroughs, the author of Tarzan, published A Princess of Mars, in which the hero was fighting with green Martians. But of course, we now know that they aren't green little people on the red planet. Why? Take a look at how many rovers and satellites we have sent to Mars. If green aliens were there, we would have seen them in the numerous pictures that are sent back to Earth. But we are still searching for evidence of past or even present life form on Mars. But, and our generation will be the one to know about it. Yes, but how? Do you remember that a few months ago, Elon Musk sent his Tesla to space? Of course, we cannot take a ride to Mars and check for life by ourselves. We have to wait for the two rovers that in 2020 will be sent to Mars and that, we have, and that will have the instrumentation to detect signatures of life. The only information we have right now on the possible presence of microbial life on Mars is back from 1973, when NASA sent the two Viking rovers to Mars in order to, de to test if the Martian soil uh, had the, the, the presence of microbial metabolism. But news were bad news, because organics were not detected. And the reason of this failure was, was that in the Martian soil there are perchlorates that uh, actually burn the organics if present. So, why am I standing here in front of you? I'm not going to tell you all about the space mission to Mars. I'm here because I have a story to tell. A story about a man and his wife, Himre and Rosalie Friedman, who spent their life looking for green microbes in the most arid desert on Earth such as the Dre Valley in Antarctica. Here, you can see the extreme desert on Earth that are considered close to Mars due to their conditions. In the driest place on Earth, that is the hyper-arid core of the Atacama Desert in Chile, green microbes are hidden inside salt formations. In the cold desert on Earth, that is the Dry Valley in Antarctica, green microbes take refuge inside rocks. While in the Moave Desert in California, green microbes are living between the rocks and the soil. And yes, you're right, these rocks are so red that they really look like Martian rock. Thanks to the discovery of microbial life inside the Dry Valley's rocks, Himre and Rosalie Friedman had the insight to search for life on Mars, not on its surface, but under it. Yes, under the Martian surface. I do I know all this? 20 years ago, I was a researcher working in Imre Friedman's laboratory in Tallahassee, Florida. And yes, you are right, I was really very young, and I had no idea how much my scientific life was going to change since then. At that time, Imre and Rosalie were scientists famous for the discovery of microbial communities inside the Antarctic rocks and their work was published just a few months later, the Vikings' bad news on life on Mars. Actually, the story I was told by Himre is that back in 1973, they could not go to Antarctica. So 
the show with the samples of colonized rocks to a microbiologist who was going there and who was also a leading scientist of the Viking mission. Unfortunately, their friend died in Antarctica, and Himri Rosalie thought that they were never going to know about the possible presence of microbial life inside Antarctic rocks. But one day, they received a box from his widow. Inside, there were rocks he had collected for them in Antarctica. As him and Rosalie had hoped and suspected, these rocks were colonized by microbes, the cryptoendolites. And here you can see a green layer made of green microbes, the cyanobacteria. All at once, cryptoendolites became a planetary news. One evening, while Himmler and Rosalie were having dinner, Walter Cronkite was saying on TV, Friedman's bound organism could raise hope anew for finding life on Mars. Indeed, we now know that in the past, Mars was suitable for life because he had abundant liquid water on its surface. But when it disappeared, it became very dry and no water, no life. Although recently we had the evidence for the presence of a salty lake under the Martian surface and also salty water was reported to appear. But we have to investigate all this much better. Anyway, if life ever appeared on Mars, it could have taken refuge under its surface. Maybe we will never find the cyanobacteria. Who knows? But we could find very resistant microbes. Nevertheless, desert cyanobacteria are so resistant that they might be the closest microbe to a Martian life form that we have on Earth. These bugs are so resistant that we call them extremophiles. They can even survive extraterrestrial conditions. How do I know all this? Because we have sent them to space in the worst trip around the world, inside a scientific box outside the International Space Station. To survive at about 400 kilometers above the Earth, under space vacuum, space radiation, and Mars-like condition, you must be an extremophile. And yes, I said the Mars-like. What we did is that we filled a compartment of the scientific box with a Mars-like atmosphere that is almost 100% CO2, and we used filter in order to simulate the Martian UV radiation. Indeed, low Earth orbit is a very, very special place to test the limit of life as we know it. And these extremophiles had really bad days out there. They had 696 bad days from launch, from landing back, from landing back to Earth. What happened? is that one day back in May 2014, this desert cyanobacteria had to leave the nice condition in my laboratory in Rome. In fact, what we did, we dried them out, we put them in a small box, and we sent them to the German Aerospace Center. Yes, I said, dried out. We removed all the water from the cells. Do these cyanobacteria die when they secreted? No. In nature, they spend most of their lifetime in a dried state and then return back to life only when the water is available. Just like this resurrection plant does. This is an example of a very peculiar biological phenomenon 
known as anhidrobiosis, life without water. So, at the German Aerospace Center, this dry cyanobacteria were transferred into a scientific box called EXPOSE, and they were sent to Baikonur. In July, three, two, one, they were launched into space, and after six hours, they reached the International Space Station. Then, one day in August, two astronauts, during their extravehicular activity, placed the scientific box outside the International Space Station. These poor dry cyanobacteria were left out there for, war, for more than one year under the worst condition ever. Finally, they came back to Earth under the seat of the astronaut Tim Peake. And after a long trip, they finally came back home, here in Rome. Did they die? No, they survived. Once in my back in Rome, these small green, small green aliens were hydrated and checked for survival. Like a sleeping beauty, upon hydration, they return back to life, because upon hydration, they repaired all the damages that were accumulated while in space. And yes, there are now green aliens in my lab. They came back from space and from Mars-like condition, so I believe they are extraterrestrial. So, now that I have told you all I know, do you think that I'm wasting my time and your money just looking at those rocks and those tiny green microbes? I hope you don't. More than 10 years ago, I had the honor and great responsibility to take care of Imre and Rosalie Friedman's collection of desert cyanobacteria, and I'm still working on them. I know for a fact that other people are studying these microbes and that the work started by Himre and Rosalie Friedman is very important for searching life on Mars. Indeed, the fact that these green bacteria can survive on Earth under the extreme condition present in desert, as well as in space under conditions that will kill most of the life form we know, should make us think that we don't know the limit of life, and that if life ever appeared on Mars, it might still be there. As I said at the very beginning of my talk, in 2020, two rovers will be sent to Mars, and they will search for life, not on the surface as the Viking did, but under it. And I'm confident that the underground holds big surprises. Who knows? And thanks very much.